This is a special presentation from KCRG TV 9 News. KCRG TV 9 celebrates 40 years of Friendsman. Hello everyone. For four decades, Dave Fransman has covered literally thousands of stories for TV9 from all across Eastern Iowa. And in that time, he's seen it all. And as Dave, or as we call him, F-Man, prepares <laughs> to hang up his press badge for the last time, we talk to friends, former competitors, and members of the KCRG TV9 family as we celebrate 40 years of Fransman. I think the, the best way to describe Dave is calm, cool, and collected. I mean, he, no matter what, no matter what was happening in the newsroom, he always held it together and always had that little kind of smile on his face. When I think of Dave, I think of a, almost the consummate reporter. He was so reliable. I mean, uh, if you gave him a story, you, know, you knew you were gonna get the story back and get it on time for the six o'clock or the 10 o'clock news. This guy is amazing. He is a machine. He pulls off package after package, year after year. How many years has it been? 40. 40 years he's been doing this, and he's the true professional. Dave Fransman, F-Man, has seen everything from film to three-quarter to everything. But one thing has never changed, and that's his knowledge of this market his relationships with people in this market, growing those relationships, and that's why he's been such a, a, a steadfast and reliable uh, reporter for all these years. You know, he came here from Alabama, he grew up in Indiana. There's no reason he should have stayed in, in Cedar Rapids. He, he, he had every reason to, at some point, move onward uh, elsewhere to get closer to family, closer to home, warmer weather, um, but he stayed here because uh, he grew, he planted roots here. This is TV9 Eyewitness News with Bruce Owney, Edie Fawcett, meteorologist Denny Frary, and John Campbell Sports. It was just, it was kind of a rebirth during um, the mid 80s of KCRG TV9 News. And I was part of a whole new crop of people who came in and it was exciting. I mean, we, we all worked together so well. It was an exciting time. Everybody supported each other and, you know, went up in the ratings and made a name for TV9. I came in 1986 and KCRG at the time was really a, a bad number three in this market uh, of, among three stations. Dave was uh, part of that process through the years of really building a new strength here and developing to the point where we started pulling in viewers and pulling in viewers and uh, this story and that story attracting viewers and as a result we built ourselves to the point where we are number one in the market and Dave Fransman has been a good solid part of that growth through the years so this station really owes a lot to him. Dave has an epic briefcase um, the old school uh, briefcase and the trench coat. I think that that is kind of Dave's uniform. And um, he also has a great pair of like mud boots that he puts on when he has to go out and cover a lot of those stories. And I think um, when I looked at the uniform for a reporter getting ready to go out into the field, he was battle tested, tried and true. He, he does not take no for an answer. So when he's looking for someone to interview, and I know we're gonna, I know we're gonna get it one way or the other. The man is tenacious. Um, you know, when I was in the newsroom, um, I would sit there and I would listen to him and you, you just want to say like, you know, Dave, you called the guy three minutes ago, give him a chance to pick up the phone. Um, now on the receiving end of that, it's like, dude, give me three minutes just to figure out what I'm doing. What I'll miss about Dave is someone who knows the viewing area, who knows the people, who understands the context. There are crimes that happened in the late 1970s that have gone unsolved. 
Dave is so on top of it all of these years later. So whenever we have an update, we don't need to go all the way back to go look through the archives. Dave is the archive for this. Believe it or not, Dave reported on the Martinko case at the time of the murder back in 1979. What can you remember from uh, from those days? Well, one thing that strikes me is the images that you saw of her singing in the choir. That was literally in this studio. Uh, she had been here with the Kennedy Choir the week before. That's what I'm going to miss. This is a real loss. I know that retirement is a beautiful thing. We're happy for him. But as a newsroom, we are lo losing somebody who is so reliable and so consistent and so trustworthy when it comes to telling this community's stories. Probably one of the biggest things we'll miss about Dave is the fact that he knows people in every walk of life. He used to have his Rolodex, and he would be able to pull out people for any story you had. I think what I'm going to miss a lot is a maturity in a newsroom setting. This is Dave France. So many of our reporters and producers and everybody today are very young, uh, right out of college or they've worked at another station. And uh, that's one thing about my level of experience here and Dave's level of experience here. And I've heard, I've heard viewers say this through the years that they really uh, appreciate that experience that we have had, which gives it a little bit of a maturity that uh, sometimes we don't have in some stations with constant turnover and uh, new people all the time. He has withstood the test of time in broadcast news and that's pretty admirable. And what I'm going to take away in his absence, what I hope I can do is be as good a reporter as he is. I hope that I can come to every meeting with an idea and I hope that I can have the base of sources that he has that he can draw from. I hope that I can tell stories as well as he can. Yeah, Dave is kind of a, a, the man, the myth, the legend. I've, I've gone through the retirement thing and, and I still seem to be kind of banging around here at Channel 9 a little bit on a freelance basis, which I enjoy. He told me he's going to be the anti-Campbell and, and we won't see him here at the station again. But uh, uh, I, I wish him the best. Obviously, I wish him the best. And, uh, and uh, I, I think he's the kind of guy that will enjoy retirement has some things going for him. And uh, yeah, we're gonna miss F-Man here at Channel 9, no doubt about it. John summed it up best there, F-Man is going to be missed here at KCRG TV 9. Boy, Dave has really seen a lot during his time in Eastern Iowa. And coming up next, you will hear from Dave, or F-Man himself, as he looks back on his 40 years at TV 9. Stay with us. Dave has spent a career traveling across eastern Iowa. He's told the stories of thousands of people from every walk of life. And now it's Dave's turn to tell his story as he reflects on his time here at TV9. Here is Dave Franzman in his own words. I was 25. Uh, we were general assignment. Uh, we didn't specialize in beats because it's, it's a small number of people, especially compared to the newspapers back then. So. Now over the years, I kind of ended up doing a lot of the government stuff, politics. I get a lot of the business stuff. They like to give me stuff that's kind of complicated because <laughs> I can kind of figure it out <laughs> with a little life experience. That's what I loved about this job. You get to do stuff that other people just normally can't. And you also know stuff before other people. That, that, that's kind of, that, that gives you an extra little kick sometimes. We'd like to go now again to downtown Cedar Rapids where the situation is getting worse every time we check in. TV 9's Dave Franzman is now there live. Dave? Well, Beth, I can tell you that uh, we are at least a block away from where we started out broadcasting this afternoon. We're now in front of... You know, the flood of 2008 is probably the most significant news stuff. But it was just like the most intense news coverage of the entire career was that. And it just happened that we were out taking a tour of some of the flooded areas, and we got the call that somebody on 8th Avenue Southwest needed to go. They had been in the ground floor apartment. And the water came up. I remember we're, we're going around in the boat, and there's people on porches. You know, the homes are in the water, and they're just waving as we go by and we're out we're doing this and we're about back and they get a call to rescue somebody and it's a woman 
on the second floor of a house that's underwater. One of the reasons was they had animals and they weren't going to leave the animals. And she's got this ginormous German Shepherd. And so here we pull up in a boat and she's on the roof with this dog and they, they, they need to rescue. But you ever try to convince a German Shepherd to jump off a roof into a boat? That dog did not want to jump in that boat. I kept, I kept track. I went three weeks, solid news, you know, every day, three weeks before I covered a story that did not involve flooding. And that was somebody got murdered. So it took that to knock the flooding out, at least for me. But it, it, you, it, it's kind of hard to imagine. We can't have any, had anything really like it since. It's just, and it literally went on for months where it was just, of course, that was what the news was. Now here's something people probably would never have expected to see a boat launched on 2nd Avenue downtown. There will be at least one airline operating here beginning October the 29th. That was a sudden decision. So sudden, in fact, some airport officials are upset. I always try to be fair, though. I think that, that's the thing. I always, I never, I never really had an agenda. Just trying to get the news. Um, I don't think I really made really in what you'd call enemies over the years. I would, I would never try to go for the cheap shot. I don't think that's fair. And that just wasn't, wasn't my kind of style. Where the nail is, is uh, where... But it's closer to fair time here in Clayton County. You'll see swarms of volunteers, maybe a hundred or so to put on the show. Right now, there's nobody. With the avian influenza situation, the kids at the 4-H here in Blackhawk County could not display their chickens at the fair like they normally do. So no blue ribbons that way. Bruce, the line's picked up a little bit here. I can tell you that the Lynn County Auditor's Office takes a snapshot of voter turnout several times during the day. Now, as of 3 o'clock this afternoon, they reported the best information. So I, my, my thought was, you know, you'd ask a question that, that, you know, you could put the person, you know, let him make, have a chance to make his best case, her best case, either way. Well, you can still find some personalized anti-cyclone messages around Iowa City. For one, $5 will get you a roll of wipeout Iowa State toilet paper. You know, there was no grand plan. It just happened. Uh, one day at a time, pretty much. Yeah, or one week at a time, and, and then after that, you know, it hasn't been that much of a strain. I mean, if, it, if I hated this job, I wouldn't have done it that long. And it's not just KCRG. I mean, I had three years at another station, years and then, so basically 44 years of television news. And if I hated it, I could have found something else to do, but no, I liked it. it was, like I said, there, there's, I'd like to know things before other people. I like to do things that other people don't necessarily get a chance to do because people like being on the news and like sitting on top of an airplane, which is, you know, there's, there's relatively few people that can make that claim. How do you want to be remembered? Oh, the, somebody that always answered the bill. They would go out and do the job. The job needed doing. You went and got the news. You beat it in the submission. You brought it back. That's, that's <laughs> kind of... That's kind of how I look at it. Oh, Dave. <laughs> well, Dave could cut through the noise and break a story down to its essential pieces. Yeah, that's not easy to do. But he was also the master of the predictable joke and even unpredictable moments of levity. The lighter side of TV news you don't always get to see. Stay with us here on TV9. Dave Franceman spent 40 years building his reputation as a serious journalist, and by and large, he was very successful in that effort. But F-Man can also be hilarious. <laughs> Sometimes it's intentional. Other times, we were just lucky to have a camera rolling. I tell people I try not to make mistakes. I've always told people when they come here from, like, first job or something like that, you know, as your, if your second job, we expect a better quality of mistake. <laughs> we, you know, so. But you don't have to be a policeman to be an organ donor. There are a couple of things you need to do. Look on the back of your driver's license, and there's a box there. Oh, yeah, it's a box. Uh, what a Are we having fun for some reason? Dave, what's uh, new with this murder investigation? 
public today. Now, the documents have taken evidence from one man and are looking for... Sorry, we have a mic there. A search warrant filed in connection with the Gilbert Place was made public today. Now, the... And we don't have any of the figures right now. All right. Well, we'll try to get a little uh, more information for you on some of the legislative races. Notice about 3D cameras. There's a lot of movements like this right towards the camera. The idea is to make you think that something's jumping right out at you from the screen. Of course, here at TV9, we don't have the budget for those expensive 3D cameras, so uh, this is as good as it gets. To take two, five, four, three, two, one. What about ten? Well, Tim made about 800 or so hats last year, but he's already hard at work again. He's got about 150 done already. Most of next week will feature highs in the 50s. A couple more pictures from America Reads today. This is from Indian Creek, the fifth graders there. Also another photo from Bowman Woods, the fifth graders there. In addition, we did have uh, you know a lot of thank you cards uh, come on by, and I only visited two groups. We all get a kick out of every afternoon is the call home to his wife asking, what's for dinner? Is there any mail? Hey, any mail? And we all kid him once in a while about that. Dave calls his wife at the same time every day to check on dinner. I know what Dave is having for dinner before I know what I'm having for dinner. One time on the air, uh, you know, you read the teleprompter, all right? Dave Ransman joins us now live from our newsroom with details, Dave. And he, he's, he's a creature of habit. So he's reading the teleprompter, and there's an intro there, and he had written ad lib. Well, Susan and Bruce. He reads the intro, and he gets to the ad lib. It's, uh, ad lib. Verbal sparring is one thing. Ad lib. On the air. It's, uh, ad lib. <laughs> He read the words ad lib. I mean, I don't, I'll never forget about that. I don't think I've ever seen anybody ever do that. You ever seen him play air guitar? It's time to sing. I feel a bad moon rising. There's a bathroom on the right. One minute. I feel a bad moon rising. There's a bathroom on the right. I feel the bad moon arising. There's a bathroom on the right. I feel the bad moon rising. There's a bathroom on the right. <laughs> oh, I know another one. They're going to probably haul out again. Um, has, anybody, has anyone talked about watermelon? No, no, one's, no one has discussed watermelon. It was uh, the, in the best interest of the children. They made a TV movie out of that case, and they had Sally Struthers in it, and they had some of us as extras. They were like dubbing in the audio or something later. And the uh, director told them all to just mouth the word watermelon. Watermelon. <laughs> watermelon. They're all mouthing this, except you hear Dave Fransman going, watermelon. So I go, watermelon. <laughs> watermelon. 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 <laughs> watermelon. And then Sally Struthers just gave him the strangest look, like, <laughs> I was doing what they said. <laughs> <laughs> watermelon. <laughs> Oh boy, we've definitely had some fun with Dave over the years and when we come back we'll have a look at Dave's favorite story from his more than 40 year career in broadcast journalism. And Dave's goodbye message for you, the viewers, that's coming up. Stay with us here on TV9. After 40 years covering news in Eastern Iowa, KCRG TV9's Dave Fransman is calling it a career, and we wish Dave all the best in retirement. Congrats, F-Man. Enjoy all the time with your grandkids and your children. We know they're going to love spending more time with you. And as we leave you, we want to share Dave's favorite story from his four decades of reporting here at TV9. No more makeup, no more neckties. <laughs> it was 32 years ago when an air show came to Cedar Rapids offered to take a reporter up in the air, not in the airplane, but on top of the airplane. Who is follow directions, no waving arms in the breeze, and make sure everything's buttoned up. 
Earl says this isn't hazardous as long as everything works. The real danger part is the, uh, let's say if the engine should quit and we'd have to land in the trees or something like that, then naturally that's going to be a pretty sad deal. Thanks a lot, Earl. To get into your perch, you climb over the biplane, the only security, a seat belt hooked to the post and some wires. After a few final instructions, the mission's on. Soon, the ride's over. When Paula does this, they loop, roll, and fly upside down at 160 miles an hour. My flight was once around the park. But you know, I can still feel the breeze and remember that view. You know, there's some rides are, are first class, and this one's standing room only. Earl and Paula say about 200 people have taken the official Wing Walkers Challenge and come away with a certificate. I like to ride so much, if they ask me to go again, I'm going to get up there another time. Good, we didn't get enough video. You're going to have to get no, up there. No, 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 you got it the first time. I'm not getting up there again. This story's over. Well, that's been my pleasure and privilege. Uh, come into your homes and to bring you the news and uh, it's been a fun 40 years it's been a long 40 years but it's been a fun 40 years and i would just sign off the way i've always signed off dave fransman kcrg tv9 news Elvis truly has left the building. <laughs> See you later.